Okay, so uh, carrying on our series, I believe this is now um, the third video in this sort of intermediate bash series. Um, in this video, I want to talk about redundancy, um, unnecessary redundancy, and maybe also um, verbosity when it is necessary. So it's just a couple of little things that we can take with us. Um, I'm going to start on the command line, uh, but these things are going to apply when we get to our script. So uh, let's go to the terminal. So one of the patterns I often see is something like this, cat, then there'll be a file. So in this case, let's cat out the script that we started making uh, in the previous videos. And then there'll be something like a pipe, then there'll be a command. And I quite often see this pattern with commands that also take files as an input. So let's say we were going to do uh, grep and then set like that. Now that has worked, but there's an unnecessary pipe here. We don't need... Uh, that pipe symbol. So we can actually just do grep, then just do the set, then do script. And you can see that we actually got the same result, but we've removed the unnecessary uh, pipe in doing so. So the pipe was never really uh, necessary in, in that respect. So I don't want to go through uh, every single command um, that can take uh, a file as a parameter, but um, orc is the same as uh, grep. So you've got Orc, let's say orc, and we could do um, f. Let's just do. Let's just do a print one, and we'll print that out, and we'll put a file into it, like um, let's put the SE password into it. So you can see now we didn't need to do any kind of uh, cat Etsy password, etc. Then pipe it into to orc. It accepts a, a file name. Sed's just the same. You haven't got to do a cat file then into sed. In this case, you just do sed. Let's just do root and replace it with tor. Do it globally in Etsy password. And you can see it's worked. You don't need to do this redundant pattern of um, you know, that into a pipe. Now, with that said, um, there's lots of tricks you can do on the command line that sometimes um, might not be beneficial uh, for your script. So. Let's give an example of uh, an if statement. So I'm going to a bit more space on this one. I think I've got enough space, actually. So let's do um, something like this. Uh, we'll use the dash n, and this dash n will be if the variable exists or not, OK? So let me give an example. So I told you about the home uh, directory in the last example. We could do something like this. Now, rather than having to do if at the start, sorry, like this, um, we can just leave this right at the start of our file. And then we could do and echo um, success or um, echo fail, like so. And in this case, the home directory existed. Now, we could put that in a script as one line. So if we go back to our... Uh, VS Code example in the last one. So we could uh, put that in our script like so, um, and that would work just fine. And that would save some of the verbosity of having to do this kind of uh, technique of else by but what you need to remember is sometimes a little bit of verbosity is good. So if somebody's coming along, this at a quick glance might make more sense than what it might be if we were to do that kind of uh, pattern. So a lot of the times in our scripts, we have to sort of uh, make a balance between um, the ultimate optimization refactoring and sometimes readability. And what you'll find is the more you code, the more the more you want to make sure your code is readable later. You'll read your code more times than you'll be spending writing your code, okay? So you want it to be really readable. Okay, so the last part of this video that I want to talk about in terms of uh, redundancy, and I see this all the time in scripts, um, it's like people trying to debug where they are, and they'll try and echo out like line numbers and say, you know, on line 18, on line 10. Uh, also, time is level one. Like so, they'll have like you know at the at the top of the script they'll have like start time, and then it'll be something really weird they've done with the date and time. And at the bottom they'll do end. 
and they'll try and subtract the start from the end and stuff. And it's just not needed um, inside Bash scripts. And I'll show you why. So let's just go to um, the VS Code. So let's say for example now, um, I want to see if I've got to line 10. In fact, I don't even need this. So let's just get rid of this a second. Um, and let's say, um, yeah, so we'll say if, um, if the home variable exists, let's get rid of that a second. I just don't make it too uh, complex. But you might see somebody... And again, I know this is going to be redundant at this point because you've already got a success fail, but you'll see somebody do something like this, echo, uh, you know, line nine. And then there might be, um, you know, down here, it might be like echo line uh, 12, right? Now, the problem with this is already, if I have to fix and debug my script, and I'm, I'm using this as a technique to debug my scripts, um, as I add code, so I come up here and go, actually, no, this is not working because of you know, whatever the reason, and actually I need to do uh, LS um, for, what, for whatever reason. Now you can see echo line nine is actually on line 10. So it doesn't make sense already. And if I have to insert a big block of code, I'd have to come in and I'd have to go update 12 to 13, uh, nine to 10, then I have to update it again and again. So, so, this, so this is like a, a really pointless syntax. Now the way around this is actually quite simple. There's a bash um, built-in variable. So if you just do line number like that, it now no longer matters um, where your lines are. It's still going to echo out the line number. Now you might want to put um, like a wrap around it. So let's just actually do this and go D. What we'll do is let's copy that, control back, and then just do a string around it. And then we'll just say, um, actually go to start and we'll go, online number, something like that, yeah? So this now, it doesn't matter if um, I, I start to do stuff like, oh, okay, here I need to do, you know, cat out, whatever whatever the thing is, Etsy uh, password. It doesn't matter now that this has now been moved down a line. So I won't, I won't keep that in here, actually, because that's going to destroy the, uh, the small space to term I've got. But if I now just take this script and I run it, in fact, actually, it might be better to keep that script there and just uh, run it in the terminal over here. Um, if I run this script now, you can see um, this actually output line number 10 for me. I didn't need to add the numbers in uh, manually. Uh, it's now been done dynamically. Uh, the second thing I often see is somebody with like, you know, a start time up here, be like start equals, and there'll be some kind of command substitution for the date and the time. Then at the end of the script, they'll come down here and they'll do some like, you know, end equals start minus, you know, you, again, you don't need that. If you want to find out how long your script's been running, um, there's actually bash built in variables for it. So if I come here and I go um, echo um, seconds like that, I come down here and we go um, echo seconds like that. I'll go to the terminal again, run my script. Now, in this case here, the script's running so fast, it's still on zero seconds. So what we'll do, we'll go back to VS Code and we'll put a uh, sleep function here. So we'll do um, sleep uh, four, and then we'll do a, uh, a sleep uh, two, like that. Let's go back to the terminal. You can see now um, it's, it's pretty much run exactly uh, after four seconds and after six seconds. But you see, there's no reason to start making your own dynamic start and end functions. There's no need to start outputting line numbers manually. There's built in bash functions that will, or bash variables, I should say, that will do that in your script. So um, that was just a couple of things about redundancy. And obviously, if we can keep these in mind as we move forward into this series, as we start looking towards making some actual tools and getting you progressing with automated uh, workflows, etc. Um, I really hope you're enjoying these videos. If you're not enjoying these videos, please, please, please tell me why you're not enjoying these videos. Um, I'm consciously aware that I'm trying to get to advanced things for you, and I'm, I'm, I might be rushing through things because I want to get to the, the more exciting, advanced stuff. And at the moment, we're really just sort of like playing. Um, but at the same time, if I'm going too fast, if I'm not explaining things, um, if you want me to go back and do some more beginner basic videos, um, just let me know. Just please tell me in the comments if you like what I'm doing and if you'd like to see where we're going, um, hit the subscribe button, like the video. I mean, it gives me 
uh, the motivation to make more videos. Um, I think you can tell, like, we, we really want to go to some advanced places with these videos. So um, give me some feedback, hit the subscribe button, um, hit the notification button, all that. And uh, hopefully I'll see you in the next video. So uh, take care.